Welcome to our English Plus Additional Language Lessons. This is uh, part two of the revision grade 12 E4, revision lessons for grade 12, and we are wrapping up visual literacy with the Northwest Province paper, the 2023 preparatory examination paper, and we are going to look into uh, analysis of a cartoon, and I'm going to share, it like I did with an advertisement, I'm going to share the mistakes that were committed by learners so that I caution you not to recycle, if not to duplicate the same mistakes in your final paper on Monday. All right, um, I've done quite a number of cartoons, so I'm not going to spend much of the time unpacking the concept and so forth. By now, you know that when you answer questions based on cartoon, um, you firstly need to analyze the storyline and uh, also check the character's body language, as well as the character's facial expression and their words. So in essence, it means that when you answer questions based on a cartoon, every emotion that you are able to outline, every um, emotion that you are able to pick up that maybe this character here in this particular frame looks rather excited or happy, it should be backed up with evidence. And then where do you get your evidence? Description of facial expression as well as description of body language. So there's no way that you can mention an emotion alone without um, a, a mentioning uh, the evidence that supports um, the emotions that you have just stated. And then also not neglecting the words of the characters themselves, the manner in which words are, 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 are typed, if they are bolded with exclamation mark like here, even here they're even darker, and then with two exclamation marks, and then you look at the nature of the speech bubble here, this is what you call a shouting or a jacked speech bubble. This means that the character is really shouting or saying the words louder, but shouting is the most appropriate answer. You look at such. And I want to share the mistakes that I came across when marking this uh, preparatory examination. One is that uh, candidates tend to mention uh, emotions like John is happy in frame four without necessarily backing it up with evidence. So please remember that when you outline a particular emotion to substantiate uh, to answer a, 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 a particular answer a question, ensure that you back it up with evidence because we rely on evidence. Remember, this is visual literacy. We are testing your ability to interpret um, a cartoon. And then secondly, you do not give yourself chance to read the storyline and understand the storyline. And I've said this countless times. If you do not understand the storyline, the last question, which is a higher order question, will be centered around the storyline. It might be the, uh, to justify the behavior of the particular character in the cartoon or to justify whether the cartoonist succeeded in cre um, creating or humor in a cartoon. So you can therefore never be in a position if you do not understand the storyline. The same way I've said with an advertisement that spend at least two minutes in an advert and analyze the advert before you go to the questions. Do the same with your cartoon. So let us quickly do that into practice. I can't believe it. Uh, homework already. I just got back to school. I can't believe it. It's bolded. Definitely he's saying the words louder. There's an exclamation mark. He's saying the words louder. So in essence, in the cartoon, you must never forget that uh, we have what you call visual, visual clue. And then we also have what you call verbal clue. Visual clue, description of facial expression plus body language. Verbal clue, you check the words of the characters, the manner in which the words are typed or written here. Of course, you check if they are bolded with exclamation mark. That is what you use as an answer to justify the emotion of uh, the character, like I've already stated. And then you've got your visual clue. That's where you use adjective, adjectives. Remember question five, adjectives describing words, facial expression. Please do not answer and say facial expression. Do not answer and say body language. Focus on that particular features and then explain how they are. And then that is how you respond and you successfully grab 10 out of 10. So I will say visual literacy, advertisement, cartoon summary, those are collectible marks. It's 10, 10, 10. You can easily collect 10 out of 10 and then scoop a distinction in English. Right? He has said all of that. Then we checked the, ver the verbal clue and have already identified that the words are bolded with exclamation mark. We look now at... Uh, his facial expression and body language, this mouth is really wide open. 
The mouth is wide open. He has his uh, hand over his eyes and then he's slightly facing upwards. And this is frame one. Okay, before I forget, before I forget, remember what I've said when, to, to fully understand the relationship between the characters. Please come here. I nearly forgot that. Please come here. This examiners will always give you this. Uh, sorry. Examiners will always give you this. Please don't neglect grade 12. Don't neglect to read this. He will always say to you, note, in this cartoon, the boy's name is Calvin and his friend is who? Hobbs. So that you understand the relationship between characters. Please, don't be in the hurry to go into questions, guys. Hey, spend time to read this so that you understand the relationship between the characters. Right, now frame two quickly. I have to write a paragraph on what I did over the summer. A whole paragraph. The mouth is still wide open. The hands are stretched out. Now, in comparison to frame one, the eyes seem to be wide open here. And then now in frame three, Calvin is still by, by himself talking, not only talking, but shouting. I'll never be able to write that much. Again, bolded exclamation mark. It's not fair. Then you look at this one. We have already identified that you call this a jet, if not a shouting bubble. To emphasize that he's saying the words louder and actually shouting. He has clenched his teeth together. His eyes are tightly closed. And then he has folded his hands into a fist and they are also lying here. This is to emphasize the extreme ang anger that is actually furious and angry here, right? And then we've got quite an, an uh, evidence, an, an, um, a plethora of evidence in this frame to support that. And then, however, there's a shift. If not, there's a contrast. Please, you must be able to note the difference because remember, there is that question of a contrast where you need to show a contrast between a part two frames and then... Uh, here now, Calvin looks extremely calm. His mouth is slightly open. His eyes are open and he seems like he's standing straight. And then he say, how is it coming? Not so good. What did you do besides watching TV? Now here, this is Hobbes. Remember they said in this cartoon, we have uh, Calvin and his friend Hobbes. So it means that the friend is assisting him to write his homework. And then now he's asking him, how is it coming? And he said, not so good. What did you do besides watching TV? And then this is actually a humorous cartoon because look at the emotions and how frustrated Coven has been from frame one, frame two, and frame three, only to find that he's dodging to write a paragraph about his uh, summer holidays, simply because now Hobbes, um, uh, Hobbes actually exposes him that the reason he was really this frustrated it is because he has done nothing but to do what to watch tv so in essence this is just nothing but a humorous cartoon and that is where humor is created now you have done all of that you have able to identify the emotions you are able to um and uh, outline facial expressions and body language to match the emotions then now safely so you can go to the question and then question interpretation, please. Question interpretation is quite important. Whenever you are referred to a particular frame, don't assume that you know. Go back to that frame again. Describe uh, from the visual. Uh, the, okay, describe from the visual evidence that Coven is upset. Look at the mark allocation is two marks. That means you must have two description. Now we go back to frame one. What shows us that... Uh, uh, which evidence rather shows us that uh, Calvin is actually um, furious. His mouth is wide open. It can be one fact. He's uh, leaning backwards. It can be another fact. He has his uh, arm over his face or eyes is another fact. So remember, we only want two for two marks. I'm just giving you extra. And then his other arm is stretched out. To the side and his hand is open ne? we're talking about this one so any from the two can fully successfully answer this question of um, a de a describing uh, the visual clue that shows that calvin is actually how calvin is actually upset so one the mouth is wide open he has um he's uh, leaning backwards thirdly he's got his arm um over his eyes and then his one arm is stretched out and the hand is open any one from the two can successfully answer that question. So can you see what I've done? I went back to the particular frame. So whenever you are referred to a frame, please go back to it so that you verify that um, and you ensure that your, your response is actually accurate. And then 
frame two choose the option below that verbally indicates Coven's um, feelings towards his homework. And then we go again to frame two. Okay, we see that here he was really, really frustrated. And then, of course, uh, the uh, correct answer here is uh, the correct answer here is is D. That in frame two he looks how frustrated. And then um, frame four point three point one and uh, four point three point two. Like I've said, when we are revising. Uh, adverts that you should be you know you must not be surprised when you get language questions in these sections like maybe the use of antonym or homophones and so forth and then here you are just required to write uh, the word al which is contracted in full of course you just got to say i will and then that is a mark and then you come here explain why the cartoonist uses a different uh, type of a bubble in this frame, whenever you are referred to a frame, you always go back to a frame to verify your answer. And then frame three. Now, you, you see what I always teach you that once you have done this analysis, you just deduce or take answers from the analysis. We have already identified this as a jet or a shouting bubble. So the cartoonist used that shouting bubble to emphasize that uh, Kelvin is actually being what frustrated or Kelvin is Actually, the most appropriate one is that Calvin is doing what is shouting. So you can say a jacked speech bubble indicates, if not emphasize, indicates that Calvin is shouting then you get your mark now let us go to the rest of the questions and check them quickly and then question 4.3.3 in a short sentence of your own use a homophone for the underlined word it's not fair this line it's um, i'm sorry this word is taken from yeah, okay, this line is taken, it's taken from frame three. And then I said to you that you must expect uh, questions around uh, language use in visual literacy. And then here we speak about homophones. It means that uh, words, okay, let me thicken my pen a bit. Let me just thicken my pen, it's a bit lighter. Um... Words that are that have the same sound but uh, different uh, different spelling and meaning. Different uh, spell spelling and uh, meaning. That is what we mean by homophones. For an example, I can have this meat. I prefer red meat. Or I will meet you later today. You hear that the sound is the same, but the spelling is different. So that means that you must come up with the word fair with the same sound as this one. However, ensuring that uh, ensuring that uh, the meaning and the spelling is not the same. So I can use this fair. I can use this fair. Right, I can say I I have a bus a bus fair. Right? And then it means that I have used this fair now as a I have used this fair as a I've used this fair as a noun because I have what is that do I have a bus fair? This is a noun. I can still have the same word fair and use it as a verb, meaning that to describe a, 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 the manner, a particular action, or a, using it as a verb to actually perform in a specific way, to show something that is being performed in a specific way. Uh, I can say a night fares forth, or I can say I 
I can equally say that I fare well in my test. I fare, not, it's not the same word, please. I fare, not that kind of a for real, of saying goodbye. <laughs> I fare well in a test. So here I've used the word fair as a verb and here I've used it as, as a noun. The same way as this fair, but the spelling is different and the meanings are different. The only thing is that the sound is uh, the same. So whenever you are coming across questions of homophones and homonyms, examiners normally ask you to uh, write those sentences in a sentence of your own. So please don't uh, be shocked when you come across language questions. And, and they are closely related because from here, question four, you're just going to go to question five. The same concepts are there again in question five, right? And then explain. Now, this is the last two questions that I'm going to emphasize on. Please, these questions are very much important. Explain how Kelvin's body language in frame three contrast in, uh, sorry, is in contrast to his body language in frame four. Grade 12, this question is very much important and normally it's always there in an examination where examiners are looking for your ability to show contrast, which is what? Difference. Now, in one of my previous interviews, when, ah, uh, not interviews, listen to me. <laughs> in one of my previous uh, analysis in, in, in my YouTube channel, I did mention that um, if you want to make life easier for you, when you show contrast, stop talking about an ear in frame three and then in frame four you talk about a nose use the same feature for an example you may talk about the eyes that the eyes might be closed in frame three to show how frustrated he is and then only to find the eyes to be wide open in frame four so it's safer to use um the same feature and then at the beginning of the lesson i said emotion plus description emotion but every time remember that emotion plus description so the best way to answer or to uh, answer or respond to your question of contrast is to identify the emotion plus emotion uh, plus uh, this emotion plus description in contrast to another emotion plus description in a particular frame so let us go back to frame three and four and check the difference thereof all right and in our analysis this is frame three frame four we say in frame three, Canva is very upset. This is emotion. We don't only say very upset. We Remember, we said emotion plus description and shouting because he is grinding his teeth. Here he is grinding his teeth and he makes a fist. Here he is making a fist and the eyes are tightly closed. I forgot to mention that the eyes are also tightly closed. So that is how we um, described him in frame three. Compared to frame four, where he seems calm, can you see now here is the contrast, the difference. Here he was upset, here he was calm. The same way that we have done with this one, we don't just say he's calm. We come up with a description. His arms are relaxed, which is a contrast of him making a fist here. So can you see this is how we are able to show contrast by using the same features, right? And then um, he seems relaxed, his mouth is open compared to where he was grinding his teeth. And then here his class eyes were tightly closed compared to here, his eyes are actually wide opened. So I've ma managed to come up with emotion plus uh, description to what contrast. And where possible, use the same feature. The eyes might be closed here, only to find the eyes might be open. The teeth were grinding here. Here the mouth is just wide open to substantiate your, your contrast and to fully uh, con uh, uh, convey contrast, contrast with which, which means um, difference. And then the last one, which is a higher order question, please make sure that you fully substantiate this response. Do you think the cartoonist succeed, uh, succeeded in creating humor? Please unpack the storyline, but in your uh, attempt to unpack your storyline, don't just unpack the storyline by telling us what happened in frame one, what happened in frame two, what happened in frame three, what happened in frame four, without really, really directing your response into showing us and outlining how humor was conveyed in this cartoon it's, it's it's a futile exercise to unpack the story because i normally encourage learners to write in full but if your answer is not rooted in what uh, uh what the cartoonist has used or how the cartoonist rather achieved uh, humor then you won't be able to get to out of and remember the aim to get if you want to get a distinction you need to collect all the marks here 10 out of 10 
So you can start by saying, for example, from frame one, two, three, Calvin seems very frustrated with his ma uh, mouth wide open and the words are bolded to show, he, uh, the, uh, to show that he's shouting. Uh, the cartoonist even used a jack to speech bubble in frame three to emphasize that he was furious and shouting that um, he does not want to write a paragraph on how he spent his holidays, only to find out in frame four, Hobbes was assisting him with his homework. However, uh, the, the, the humor is centered around the idea that this whole frustration stems from the fact that he did not do anything uh, during the holidays besides watching TV. So it means that he does not have sufficient facts to write a paragraph because he did nothing. So can you see what I've done? I've taken a bit from um, the storyline and I've unpacked the storyline. I've also used body language as well as facial expression. I've used actually verbal clue and a visual clue to sust uh, sustain, uh, substantiate my answers, but towards the end, I really showed where the humor comes from. So please don't just unpack the storyline without really showing us where humor is. I hope this is, um, or this is going to be a very uh, fruitful lesson for you as we prepare for Monday. And this was indeed the last lesson on visual literacy in preparation for the 2023 grade 12 final examination. On tomorrow's lesson, now we are going to unpack comprehension skills and how to respond to comprehension questions. We are going to take a few of the questions from the Northwest Province 2023 preparatory examination. Thank you. Don't forget to like the video, to subscribe and also to share the link. Thank you.